invocation will be given by Pastor Diane Coleman of the Highland Methodist Church. Item two of the Pledge of Allegiance of Texas Pledge will be will be led by Councilmember Lewis. So again, Pastor uh, Diane Coleman can come forward and lead us in prayer. Did I get that right? Adrienne. Adrienne. That's a right. Texas pronunciation. There you go. Let us be in an attitude of reverence. Spirit of life, spirit of love, spirit of community and of justice, we ask your blessings on the people who have come here tonight, those who have come to lead and those who have come to listen, those who have come to learn. We ask your blessing on our community where we live and we work and we play. Grant us the wisdom and the courage to know what to do, what is right, good and true. May we speak when it is time to speak. May we listen with a time to listen. May we be guided by the spirit of community, by the spirit of justice, and by the spirit of love. Help our leaders not to ask first how can we fix this, but how do we need to learn? How might, might we need to change? To whom do we need to listen for the common good of all? This we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold good and right and true. May it be so. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. Pledge of to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Doctors and chiropractors will focus on the whole person with non-drug, non-invasive treatments and pain management, most notably spine manipulation, can play an important role in helping patients lessen their reliance on pain medications. And whereas this is a growing body of research supporting the early use of chiropractic spinal manipulation in helping patients with chronic low back pain to reduce or eliminate their need for later prescription opioid pain medications and surgery. And whereas the theme of chiropractic on the front line of pain, Chiropractic Health Month 2022, serves as a reminder to citizens of the city of Odessa, Texas, that non-drug treatments for lower back, such as spinal manipulation provided by doctors of chiropractic, can help lessen or eliminate the need for riskier, potentially addictive treatments should be utilized where appropriate before starting prescription opioid pain medications. And now, therefore, as I, Javier Hoven, by the virtue of authority vested in me as the mayor of this great city of Odessa, Texas, do here proclaim October 2022, Chiropractic Health Month. So help me throughout the city of Odessa. Let's join in Texas Chiropractic TCA and the American Chiropractic Association, the ACA, in promoting the benefits and movement, good posture, health living, and non-drug approach to pain management. Let's give these uh, doctors a round of applause. 
I just want, just want to say thank you all. I mean, we've had, I've had the pl privilege and the honor of serving uh, the people in the Permian Basin for the last 15 years with uh, conservative chiropractic care. Uh, the power that made the body can heal the body. That's what we uh, like to say. So uh, I just want to thank the people of the Permian Basin and Odessa uh, for allowing us to provide such a, a pain relief in, in your low back pain and, and a conservative way. And remember, don't text and drive, OK? Uh, Dr. Ed Rowland. I'll just say ditto. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna shuffle some things around here. So Mary gets Mary gets to rule. So we're gonna shuffle some things around. Um so who do we have here? Um, Marnie Lane, did I get that right? Yes, you got it right. I, I just don't want to butcher anybody's name. I get upset when I when my mind's are constantly. Okay. So, um, City of Odessa Proclamation. Whereas the Association of Desk and Dairy Club of Midland enhances and promotes the contribution of the petroleum energy, allied industries, through education and resources. Whereas the Foundation and Educational Trust of the Association's assistant projects and scholarships related to chemical and petroleum. And whereas the industries contribute to enhance the economy of the Permian Basin, makes the community thrive. And whereas the City of Odessa recognizes the industries for their vital service in our community and in the area. Now therefore, I have yet hoped by the virtue authority vested in me, as mayor of this wonderful City of Odessa, Texas, do here proclaim October 13th, year of our Lord, 2022, as Desk and Derrick Industry Appreciation Day. So out, throughout the city of Odessa, we encourage all citizens to extend their appreciation for placing communities on this map. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's hear a little word about the trade ministry. And what's up. So I'm Marnie. I'm the president of the Desk and Derrick Club. Uh, we have joined Midland and Odessa together. Um, our, we are focused on bringing scholarships to people attending higher education for um, the oil and gas in energy industry. Um, Thursday night at Ranchland, we will be hosting our annual industry appreciation where we will you know, kind of tell everybody about what the industry is and about our club. We have some great speakers. We, Kirk Edwards is speaking. Um, we have a, con a commissioner speaking and uh, three local business owners on top of that. So thank you very much. You. Odessa, Texas, home of big oil and corporal punishment. Can't go wrong there. Walked to end Alzheimer's Day, Julie Gray. We have Julie Gray in, in attendance. Take your time. You got the chief taking pictures. There you go. I have no shame. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. The city of Odessa, make sure we get our good side. Yes. The city of Odessa pro uh, proclamation, whereas Alzheimer's disease is a progressive degenerative disease of the brain and the disease is not normal part of aging. There is currently no cure. Whereas currently there are more than 6 million Americans living with Alzheimer's, 400,000 of those here in Texas. There are over 1 million unpaid caregivers here in Texas providing over 1.7 billion hours of care each year. Whereas Alzheimer's Association is a leading voluntary health organization in care and support of the largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's research. Whereas Odessa, Texas acknowledges the mission of Alzheimer's Association to eradicate the disease through the advancement and research to provide care and support for all affected and to reduce the risk of dementia through the promotion of brain health. Now, therefore, I, Javier Hoven, by the virtue authority of me, mayor of this wonderful city of Odessa, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 15th, 2022, as Walk to End Alzheimer's Day. Throughout the city of Odessa, urge all citizens to recognize the contributions of Alzheimer's Association and all the volunteers and families who are fighting this disease. Let's give them a, a round of applause for everything they did. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Hoven. It's such an honor to be here. Um, so, like he said, Alzheimer's is not a normal part of aging, and it is our mission to end this disease. And on Saturday, this coming Saturday, at the Samarix Pavilion, 
um, in Midland. Um, like Marnie, we've joined Midland and Odessa because we're bigger as one in the Permian Basin, and we will be walking to end Alzheimer's. It's our largest fundraising and awareness campaign, and the money that we raise gets put right back into our community to help our doctors, our health systems, but also that frontline care with education programs, support groups, and that early detection um, that is so important. So um, if you can, please join us. Uh, the event will open at 9 a.m. We will um, kick off our opening and promise garden ceremony at 10, and we'll walk shortly after. So I know there's lots of things, great things going on in both Midland and Odessa, but please come out join us it's a beautiful morning to bring together our community and honor the ones that we have lost to this disease the ones that are living with it today and all of us caregivers and family members and friends so thank you very much oh alz.org walk all of the details there so thank you very much okay i think everyone's here for this one um, Chef Alejandro, would like to come out here and join us, bring your beautiful family. Met your mom. I know your mo I know your mom's from where I can't. We we are not able to place it. I asked her to come join us, but I think she's a little too shy. <laughs> so the city of Odessa proclamation. Whereas Alejandro Barrientos is a co-owner and executive chef of the Curbside Bistro. It wasn't our fault that we not put your name, okay? <laughs> Whereas he is true hometown success story and the embodiment of hard work, dedication, entrepreneurial spirit, giving back to this community. And whereas receiving his associate's degree in culinary arts at Odessa College, go, go Wranglers, he stayed in Odessa to give back to this community. Whereas his success began with a single food truck operation and has grown with additional food truck and brick and mortar restaurant. Whereas Alejandro has placed Odessa on the map representing our community locally, statewide, and nationally. He was featured on the Texas bucket list, represented Odessa proudly in beating Bobby Flay on the Food Network. And whereas Alejandro has a big heart in serving the community as he has donated hot meals to the Salvation Army, provided hot dogs to those working tirelessly during the city water situation, providing Thanksgiving meals since 2016. The list just goes on and on and on. Whereas the city of Odessa acknowledges Chef Alejandro for his exemplary and tireless effort in serving our community. Now, therefore, I have yet hoping by the virtue of authority vested in me as mayor of this wonderful city of ours, Odessa, Texas, do here proclaim October 11th, 2022, as Alejandro Barrientos Day. So throughout the city of Odessa, we urge all citizens to recognize the contribution made by this outstanding citizen. Best wishes for a continued success in all of the future endeavors. Let's give Chef Alejandro this family a wonderful applause. <laughs> So first off, thank God for every opportunity he has blessed us with. We are beyond blessed and never imagined we do half the things we were able to achieve. Um, thanks to my mom, my grandpa, all my family, my brother, my sister over there, my nieces mm -hmm. and nephews, everybody has supported us. Thank you to this amazing community. Um, I think you guys are just as crazy as I am for Follow me and all the crazy menu items we, we make. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting macaroni and cheese on burgers and eggs and all that other stuff. So I just want to thank you guys and um, just thank you. We're, we're honored. We're blessed. Thank you guys. One of the things is, you know, both him and uh, Councilmember Mata are just body shaming us like crazy. He looks great and has he's been working out. <laughs> You know, we, we hate you, you know that, right? <clears throat> In 
Any citizen wanting to make comments on non-agenda items can do so by coming forward and filling out a card. You have three minutes to make a comment on non-agenda items. I will also remind the council on non-agenda items. We cannot respond, but we can direct staff to be able to uh, contact whoever has issues on non-agenda items at a further time. Anyone wishing to do so can come forward, come to the podium, and to state your name for the record. Any member of the public may address city council regarding any of its agenda items before or during consider consideration of said item. We're gonna to move to item four, consent agenda. Council, have you had a time to review the consent agenda as presented? And I will consider a motion for approval. Or so not. I have a motion by Council Member Willis, second by Council Member Mata for approval of the consent agenda as presented. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Other council action, item one, consider rejection bid for the fourth in Jackson parking lot construction project, Mr. Scott Anderson. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Uh, this item was brought to you last week at the work session. Uh, I this presentation prepared by JSA Architects for the construction of a new parking lot in Northwest Corner, fourth and Jackson Avenue. The proposed construction would consist of 41 off street parking spaces, tree lighting, landscaping, and Scott, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes, sir. Keep it. Is that better, sir? Perfect. Okay. Bids were publicly advertised on June 22nd and 29th. Uh, Seal fields were open on July 13th. We received. That helps, too. <laughs> that may help. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Can you start uh, over and start that no. over? <laughs> Sealed bids were opened on July 13th. Two bids were received. One from uh, Carzel Construction out of El Paso, which was considered a no bid because they did not respond to alternate number three or working days for the project. We did receive one other, pro uh, one other bid from J uh, J.C. Roberts Construction in the amount of $448,000 for a base bid and sixty-six thousand seven hundred dollars for uh, the alternates, three alternates, bringing the total project price at five hundred fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Our architect's estimate slash budget was three hundred thousand. So, due to the single qualifying bid and, and that bid being over our ca allocated budget, the architect and staff is recommending rejecting these bids. Plans and specifications will be revised, and staff will work on alternate avenues to bring the project back to council for consideration at a later date. Council, any discussion? Any direction? Council, do I have a bid to uh, accept the uh, rejection of the bid on the 4th and Jackson parking lot? Did so you move reject the bid. I have a uh, motion by Council Member Swanner, second by Council Member Sprawls. All in favor indicating by saying not. Aye. Aye. All opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, sir. We're going to move on to item uh, two consider bid award for Tanglewood Lane reconstruction from Pembroke Street to East 52nd Street. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Council. <clears throat> the purpose of this project is to reconstruct approximately 21,000 square yards of pavement remove and replace carbon gather and sidewalk and install LA approaches. As part of this project, we will replace old cast iron water lines under the roadway. The bids uh, for this project were opened on September 20th, 2022, and two responsive bids were submitted for this project. The lowest responsive bidder was Permian paving in the amount of $1,915,187.60. And the engineer's estimate for this project was 2.4 million. Based on the previous work experience of similar scope and the references provided, we believe Permian Paving is capable of successfully completing this project. And Newton Engineering, the design consultant uh, and city staff, have reviewed the bids and recommend awarding the bid to Permian Paving in the amount of $1,915,187.60 along with reserving a 20% contingency. And I'll be happy to answer to your questions. Council, any questions? Um, when does the proposal to start? Uh, start uh, date? Approximately within two months. Two um, months. And the contract talking, is awarded. 120, 120 days to And 120 to days for the, con for the job to be completed. Okay. 
Council, any questions, any discussion? Have a motion to accept the considered bid award for Tanglewood Lane Reconstruction, Pembroke Street to East 52nd Street. So moved. I have a motion by Council Member White. Second. Do I have a second by Council Member Mata. All in favor indicated by saying aye. 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 All those opposed indicated by saying nay. Motion passed unanimously. <clears throat> We're going to move on to item three, consider bid award for Meadow Avenue re reconstruction from Murphy Street to I-20 service road. All right, go ahead. And the purpose of this project is <clears throat> to reconstruct approximately 14,000 square yards of roadway, from which 11,000 square yards is pavement reconstruction and 3,000 square yards is a 10-foot wide concrete valley in the middle of the roadway to improve drainage. The bids for this project were opened on September 20th, uh, 2022, and three responsive bids were submitted for this project. The lowest responsive bidder was again permanent paving in the amount of $750,046 and is within budgeted amount for the project. As mentioned previously, based on the previous work experience of similar scope and the references provided, we believe permanent paving is capable of successfully completing this, this job, this project. The Public Works Department has reviewed the bids and recommends awarding the bid to permanent paving in the amount of $750,046, along with reserving a 20% contingency. Council, any questions? Direction? Is it the same timeline? 120 working days. Okay. Any further discussion? I have a motion uh, for approval of item three, a uh, bid award for Meadow Avenue reconstruction to so Murphy moved. Street. I have a motion Second. by Council Member Willis, seconded by Council Member Mata. All in favor indicating by saying aye. aye. Uh, all opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We're going to move on to item four, discuss and consider report recommendation regarding public safety compensation, Evergreen Solutions, LLC. Evergreen Solutions, represented. Please hear me. Mark. Good evening. Good evening. All right, well, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I'm happy to come and provide an update to you all on our preliminary findings and um, some, some recommendations as well as a, a request for direction um, from the council as far as proceeding with this uh, compensation and classification study. So what I wanna to talk to you today about, I do wanna go over a little bit of um, sort of a, a recap or review on our study goals and a project overview of the timeline that we're working from, what we've done thus far, what we plan to complete uh, again into the future and sort of where we are at this moment. Uh, we will provide uh, then some information on our market survey methodology, um, the, the market survey up to this point, what we have, which peers that we've looked at and the different sort of sampling frames that we're going to be considering. Um, and then pending direction from you all if you'd like us to consider something else again we can certainly uh, go that direction we do need to have a conversation about compensation philosophy that's where I've, I've mentioned that we'll sort of ask for a little bit of direction uh, because there are some different ways that this um, any sort of compensation and classification um, you know recommendation can go depending on the city's compensation philosophy and the direction you all would like to proceed with uh, you can have some different numbers, some different recommendations that would come out of that. Um, and so I'll wrap up today um, and certainly can address any questions as needed as well with a, a discussion about the next steps and considerations for where we go from here um, based on the information I share and based on the information that you will have to, to direct back to us. So with any sort of compensation and classification study, um, one of the important things that we want to do is, is make sure that we do consider the market and, and also consider the internal equity of, of any recommendations that we make. Um, that does pertain to the public safety recommendations, which we know we're bringing forward first. Um, but just as a reminder, a sort of uh, refresher for you all, it will also pertain to the general city recommendations that will come at a later date. Um, so this part of the process, the internal and external analysis, 
both of those would factor in, again, first with the public safety and then with the um, general government. So when you're looking at making comparisons, it is important to ensure that you're going to be able to do something that is internally equitable. Uh, when you look at positions, when you look at um, which employees are performing at, at what level, you want to be able to compensate those employees who have additional complexity, additional leadership, additional responsibility, um, potentially at a higher level, and those that have a lower level of complexity and, and responsibility and, uh, and leadership may be compensated at a lower level. Um, that's an internal comparison that you'll make, um, but of course it's also critical to make the same comparisons to the market. When you go out into the market, you want to compare similar positions. You want to make sure that uh, the positions that we're comparing here at the city are doing similar tasks and working at a similar level in the market. And so all of our recommendations will come back and factor both of those two aspects um, and we'll consider the market, but we'll consider the internal equity as well. <coughs> So with the project phases, again, at, at a high level, what we want to do with a project, we start off and we work with the city, um, what, what we call the outreach phase. So that includes collecting information, job descriptions, pay rates, pay policies, having discussions and, and introductory meetings with uh, human resources, city administration, et cetera. We also came out in person um, and actually hosted a couple meetings in this very room and, and some others in this building as well to meet with employees and collect information from them, to give them the chance to share with us their concerns, uh, the things that were important to them. We, we did learn a lot about the, uh, the city at that time. And again, both directly from employees, from leadership, uh, and from different groups uh, throughout the city. We do have a data collection uh, phase that we're sort of wrapping up, which is the job assessment tool where we did give employees the opportunity to provide us information about the duties and responsibilities that they have. So that is used uh, in conjunction with the job descriptions to ensure that we understand the work that is being performed by employees uh, every single day, week, month, and over the course of the year. Phase two is the classification phase. Again, this will probably be with general government very important to, to really understand that classification, that internal analysis of do we have the correct job titles, do we have the correct um, hierarchy between positions. With public safety it can be important as well. We did hear some classification concerns from some of those employees but um, obviously the market can get more of the focus there because you, you tend to have that rank structure that is similar uh, throughout organizations so you can sometimes you know use that to make comparisons externally a little bit easier um, but certainly we think the classification piece is still important important with public safety to ensure that you are comparing apples to apples, um, you know, that a, an employee here is doing the same thing as an employee there. Phase three is the compensation phase, and really it's, it's not a discrete phase that happens after phase two is over. We do sort of start phase three. We're in the middle of phase three right now with, with general government, and we are starting to wrap up, and we do have some findings and some recommendations, again, based on phase three with the public safety, um, as we did receive that direction to proceed at a, more, uh, at a more rapid pace there to make sure we came back with those results as quickly as we could uh, while still ensuring accuracy. So we're sort of at the end of that phase right now with the public safety. We do have some some findings to share with you on that market comparison uh, for compensation. Phase four is, is where we are. Uh, we have started the modeling. We have come up with some models and some costs and some projections for your public safety positions. So we are in phase four right now. However, with phase four, with the recommendations, the different implementation options that we can consider, um, there are several different directions we can go. That's one of the things we'll talk to you about today, depending on the assumptions that we make, depending on which peers you compare to, depending on where you want to find yourself in the market. So we'll talk more about that in a moment, but I do think it's important to note um, that it's not as simple as plugging in numbers and saying, okay, it's going to be X percentage increase, uh, because there are some, some basically some assumptions that have to be made beforehand to make sure we're all on the same page, that we know what we're doing and why. It will be followed with some reporting as well, and so we certainly want to be able to share the details of our methodology, what we found, um, and why we made the recommendations that we did. Um, and so these presentations here, and, and we expect we would come back again and present uh, you know, findings at a later date as well. Um, that's part of the reporting phase, but there's also a written report. Um, the PowerPoint obviously has been published, and so again, that, that written as well as um, in-person presentations or virtual meetings as needed uh, will be considered part of the reporting phase. So with the market survey, 
Um, I want to talk a little bit about the methodology that we use just so again everybody understands what, when I start to talk about numbers and differentials and what we saw we're all on the same page understanding how we came to those um, to, to, to those numbers and um, how we got to this point so the first thing that we do is we do look to identify peer organizations and, and when we look for peer organizations we want to look at two types of organizations both competitors and comparators so when we talk about a competitor that's an organization that is competing with you for talent. It may be somebody who has poached talent from you, um, you know, who's actually taken employees from you. It may be somebody you're just recruiting against that you say, hey, when we go out to hire, we know people can apply here, they can apply there, and we wanna make sure that we know what they're doing. Because if they're offering a job and we're offering a job and theirs pays more or theirs has better benefits or theirs has better hours, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever the fact may be, we know that's something that you have to consider here at the city. Comparators are organizations um, across the state in this case, but, but you don't have to limit yourself to the state. You could look in the, the, the region, you could look in your local area, the state, the country, et cetera. Um, but the comparator organizations are organizations who are similar um, to the city here. Maybe they offer similar services. They have similar jobs, potentially the same size, potentially uh, similar budgets. Um, you know, any sort of number of factors that you want to look at. A comparator would be an organization that you would look at and you would say, hey, they're similar to us. They may have similar concerns um, and they may have a similar scope of services and perform services at a similar scale to what we do. And so we look at both competitors and comparators to try to understand your market positioning. Um, it's not enough to just look at one or the other because again, the comparators can give you some valuable information about how are other people handling similar issues to what you're seeing. The competitors though, again, are critical because it doesn't matter if an organization is, is bigger or has more money or, or anything else. If they're competing with you for talent, it's important to take a look at them as part of the picture. Um, we, we then go out and collect market data on identified benchmark positions that represent the entire city. And so again, I'll, I'll sort of delineate here between public safety and general. With public safety, we do look at all ranks. So we looked at all of the ranks that you have from firefighter all the way up, um, you know, and from police officer all the way up. And so th there's really not as much benchmarking with public safety because we do take a look at all ranks. With general government employees, the benchmarking process would involve selecting positions uh, that we believe can represent each department, each job family, um, each level of the organization. So entry level positions up, up to and through directors um, to, to city leadership, to professionals, anyone in between. And so that benchmarking process is a way for us to ensure that we do have positions that will provide market data, um, again, from each department. And so while we don't survey every single job in the city um, with respect to general government, again, we did survey all public safety ranks, um, but while we don't survey every single job within the city, you may be able to make a market determination based on the internal equity and the relationships between positions. Uh, so as a very simple example, you might have an administrative assistant and an administrative supervisor. Um, you may survey the administrative assistant and find out what that rank would be and, and where that would come back in the market. So you may not need the data on the supervisor because you might know from an internal comparison that supervisor should be 10% higher than the administrative assistant. If you've looked at those job duties and you say, hey, this person's going to be a little bit higher, they have a little bit more leadership, a little bit more complexity in their job. Um, and so that's how that benchmarking process would work. Once we have the peer selected, we have the position selected, um, <clears throat> we would go out to the market and analyze the differences that we find um, from the city here to the base pay as well as the pay practices in the market. And so the compensation philosophy can dictate this a little bit. I think we're going to get to that maybe either the next slide or coming up shortly after. Um, but the compensation philosophy can dictate um, whether you want to compare and say, hey, this is the market average and we'd like to pay there at the average. Your compensation philosophy might say, look, we want to be above average. We expect to have the best employees here, and so we don't want to pay at the average. We want to pay above that. That can be part of your compensation philosophy. You may decide that, hey, this is, yeah, this is a representative market, but we don't necessarily want to compare to the whole market. We can drop the lowest, position, uh, the, the lowest peers in the market and essentially compare to those higher. So those are the decisions we'll talk about in a moment. But, but again, that is part of the process. Um, when you come back with data, you, you really have to decide how to apply that data 
and how you want to use it for the study to best serve the needs of the city. Um, and, oops, I go the right way there, yeah. And so, um, actually, before we get onto the compensation philosophy, we will look at uh, the market peers. Um, and so, again, I expect as this has been published, you all have had time to take a look at this list. Um, but the peers that are up there right now, again, this is the list of, of organizations that we've compared to um, for the entire city. And so you will see some, I know we're here to talk more specifically about public safety this evening, so you'll see some uh, peers on there, particularly at the bottom of the list, that, that may or may not apply as directly tonight, and, and that's okay. They may have just not come back with a match. We don't have a, a matching position when we compare fire or police. Um, but for the entire city, again, to keep in mind, these are the organizations that we've gone out to and requested data from um, and tried to look so that we can, again, best represent the entire city when we make these market comparisons. And so we looked at a number of factors. Uh, we did look at comparable cities, and including some of the cities that you all have looked at in the past. We tried to select organizations that we heard about uh, from outreach. So employees sharing with us, here's where our recruitment and retention concerns are. We did add some of those cities to the list as well. Um, we added cities from across the state that have similar uh, budgets and populations and incomes. And, um, and, and again, so we did try to represent not just the top of the market, um, of course, not just the bottom of the market, but we did try to represent a good picture um, of that broad market and we believe these cities um, while not you know a definitive list you could add a city you could remove a city we believe this presents an accurate picture of the market that you compete in one additional thing I'll add here is we do try to to um, include a, a sufficient number of peers so that any one outlier is not going to significantly skew the data um, and so if you were to look at only a comparison of five or six or seven cities it is possible that adding one outlier city who pays significantly more, significantly less, could impact the numbers that you come back with. Uh, it could drive it up or down by a few percentage points. Um, but with the sample we have, it is designed again so that a, an outlier will not significantly skew the results. So with the compensation philosophy, this is where I'll sort of break down and, and talk about a few different things at a conceptual level, um, but I will ask for a little bit of direction this evening um, on some of these items. Um, because again, when we come forward to make recommendations, the decisions that the city makes on these items uh, does have the potential to affect the numbers and the costs um, and the implementation that we would recommend. So the first thing that is, that is listed up at the top, the very first item, the first bullet is, what market position would the city want to pursue? And so I will be clear that, that the direction we get tonight doesn't have to be definitive, that you say this is it and that's it and we're going with this position no matter what. Um, but what it will do is if you tell us we want to compete at the average of the market, we're gonna come back with numbers and we're gonna say, this is what it looks like if you compete at the average, this is what the cost will be. Um, we'll work directly with city leadership and HR to, to show them every single position, every single grade, uh, how we would update the pay ranges um, to put you at the average comparison in the market. That would be the average among the list of the, the cities that we just showed. But we understand, again, if you're, if you're talking about being at the market average, you're probably not gonna lose peers to the bottom of the market. You know, Maybe something happens that, that's outside of pay. Maybe somebody moves, maybe somebody has a connection and they go there. But for the most part, we understand that the, the peers who are going to be more competitive, who, who may have a stronger offering, whether that be salary or benefits or, or, or supplemental pays or anything else, we understand those peers may present a more comp uh, compelling offer to employees. And so we do have the option and the opportunity to look at a, a more aggressive market position. And so I've listed a few examples there, 66th percentile, 75th percentile. Essentially, that would put you in the top third or the top quarter of the market, depending on, again, the preference. The higher the market position you take, the more expensive it will be, the harder it will be to stay there year over year, um, and the higher salaries we would be paying. So again, there is the pro and there is the con. There's the trade-off there that yes, we wanna offer a high salary, but it would have an additional expense, again, the higher in the market that you decide you would like to go. Um, we do have up there, again, if, if we would like to model something where we lead the market, we can absolutely do that. We have the data, we've collected the information, um, but it will be incumbent on, again, the city to give us that direction of how we would like to move forward with the information that we've collected. Um, I will share, and, and let me um, 
if we need to come back to this, we can. I do have some costs that we can talk about of the different assumptions and how it will impact things. Um, so we can come back to that if needed, but I believe we have a slide later on that'll let me um, discuss that in, in more detail. One of the considerations that we've put out to the right-hand side, I'm just gonna mention it here at the beginning. It is something for us to consider throughout the decision-making process. Um, is do we want to have a consistent philosophy between public safety and general government employees? So essentially what I mean by that is if we decide tonight that we'd like to proceed and we'd like to be in the top quarter of the market for public safety, is that a decision that you all would expect to carry forward with general government as well? Uh, because again, we do have costs that we can share with you this evening, but we only have the cost for public safety at this point. So, so I do wanna be very clear when we give out some numbers, when we start talking about here is a, a potential expectation of what that might cost, um, that would be public safety only. There will be some additional price that will come back when we compare with general government. So beyond simply comparing at the market position, one of the other things that you can talk about is, are we comparing base pay only, or are we wanting to compare at the same rate with supplemental pay, <laughs> benefits, you know, including retirement, time off, health care, etc. Um, because you could have a compensation philosophy that says we're okay to be at the market average for pay, but we want to be above average when it comes to the supplementals because we want to incentivize um, employees. So we're going to start everybody at the same base, you know, the market average for base, but those employees who want to get the extra supplements, who want to go above and beyond, could, could come back above and beyond the market. You could do the opposite. You could say, hey, we'd like to lead the market in base pay and we're not as worried about our supplemental pay. Maybe put our supplemental pay at the average, but put our base pay you know, above the market, top quarter, top third. Um, you could make that determination. We are collecting benefits information as well. So again, that is something we could factor in to say, as far as the benefits, when looking at the total package, so supplemental pays, benefits, base salary, all of it together, we could decide, hey, we'd like to have a unified compensation philosophy of the top third of the market for public safety and general government. These are all examples, but they are important things to consider. Uh, when we do look at particularly the public safety and particularly fire, we know um, that while well, we'll share in a moment that the base pay is a little below the market, um, the supplemental pay we believe to be above the market. So that is something that has to be looked at at the same time. Um, and we, we just have to essentially make that decision is, do we want to look at adjusting the supplemental pay? If we go above market or, or at market for the base pay, what does that mean for the supplemental pay? The other thing that we can consider again, when, when we talk about base pay, that's the starting salary rate. Um, I believe it was shared. I know everybody here is familiar and I believe it was discussed previously that the firefighter starting at, I think the 53,000 is the number we can look at. That's just the base pay. That's the starting pay of where they're gonna come in. But the other things you can look at is, okay, so maybe we have that base pay, but how do they advance year over year? Um, how do they achieve steps? How often do they achieve steps? How large are the steps? How does somebody get from the bottom of their pay range, so the, the minimum pay, to the maximum pay? How do they move through their range? So those are other things that we will want to consider. Um, again, these are things we're all very comfortable coming back with recommendations on. We'll work directly with your city leadership on coming you know, with, with these examples, or excuse me, with these uh, recommendations. But I do think it bears mentioning as well, because you will see among your peers, some of them will have a more aggressive step system. Uh, they'll have fewer steps that get you from minimum to maximum quicker. Some will have more steps where you'll have maybe potentially more room to grow at the end of your career, uh, but it takes a little bit longer to get there. So these are all additional considerations that you can think about when you talk about compensation. Um, it's not as simple as a base pay number, um, but there are a, a bunch of things that will go into that. And again, we're, we're prepared to give recommendations on each of these items. So with the recommendation options, and, and as I referenced, I did have a slide. Here's where I can talk to you a little bit about the costs that would be associated with the different options. So I'll quickly run through the options here and just show you sort of what we've looked at, um, what costs we have. Um, option one, we, we did look at costing out an option that essentially compared all peer organizations listed that had matching and, and appropriate positions. Um, so you'd be paying at, at exactly the market average. Um, so we could say, hey, based on that average number that came back, 
Uh, we can place you in the middle of that for each of your ranks. So starting at a, a firefighter at the average, a battalion chief at the average, a police officer at the average, a dispatcher at the average, we can do that again for each of these public safety ranks. That would be option one. Um, and it would be cheaper than going forward with the more expensive, uh, the more aggressive options. So if you'll let me pull out, a, I've got a little cheat sheet because I know we've got a lot of costs just to talk about to make sure um, I'm, I'm correctly addressing these. Um, that cost, depending on how aggressive you wanted to be moving employees through the range. Um, so, so again, talking about compression, talking about moving employees from the base um, to the max and through the range. That cost could come back anywhere from about 1.75 million up to about 4 million. Um, and that's talking about public safety only. Now, again, a key consideration to, to keep in mind, that is all public safety. I know we've heard some costs previously. I believe it was quoted about 2 million previously. That was, I believe, only looking at um, specific fire ranks, so not all public safety. So these costs would be all public safety. When we did run a comparison on the same fire ranks only, uh, what we found, and our cost was slightly off from the number that was quoted here, but I think it was it was probably a database and, excuse me? $178. Yeah, it, it, right, it was it was close, but it was a, a little off, but but essentially we got the very similar numbers to what the, the fire got um, when, when they came forward with their numbers, and the uh, implementation option for those fire positions only, our recommended, if, if we go with the average pay, uh, would be a little more than $1 million. Um, and so again, that is a significantly lower number um, than the 1.9 something million that was, was shared. Um, and so again, this would represent a lower cost if you went with option one. Um, options two and three, again, they're gonna be similar. It's essentially varying degrees of, of how aggressive that you would like to be. Uh, top third or top quarter of the market. Again, depending on the different options that you look at and that you select, there could be significantly varying costs there. So these options would be much more expensive than the market average. Um, and depending on how you cost these options out, again, you're potentially looking at um, as low as maybe 2.5 um, to 2.75 million. That'd be the top third um, option. Uh, and if you get to the top quarter and if you address compression, if you go all the way move people through the ranges as appropriate from minimum to maximum, uh, you're potentially looking at a cost uh, of approaching six million dollars, um, and again, that's for public safety. Um, so that would recommend uh, that would represent again a significant increase in significant movement. But what that option would do? So I, I don't want to just talk about the the negatives, the cost. Certainly, again, that option would put you in a very aggressive market position. Um, it actually would come back very close to the numbers that were shared um, last week. Essentially, we would look at that top quarter option. Um, as, as very comparable to those numbers. I believe it was about 65,000 starting for that firefighter pay. Um, it, it would be very close and very competitive um, to that. So essentially the top quarter option of the market, we would look at as very comparable to the, the numbers that had already been shared. Um, option four, we did also go out and we didn't share them on the previous slide, but we did actually look at some of the additional cities um, that, that FIRE had, had requested and, and had looked at on their own. We did meet with them. They provided us that information at Outreach. Um, and we did add those cities and, and run a comparison there as well. As I mentioned, those costs are going to be very similar to the top quarter option. So if you want to be in the top quarter of the market, um, you're going to be looking at, uh, again, cost numbers very similar um, with the, the proposed plan previously as, as well. Um, if you address compression, if you move people throughout the ranges um, as well. And so those options, again, option four, that's you know the, the essentially the option costed by council. Uh, we did look at that comparison. We will, uh, again, according to our numbers, that top quarter option is gonna be pretty similar to those costs. Although, again, the way we costed out that option was across the board increases. So I think it was the 22%, the 15%, the et cetera. Um, the costing for that fire option, we actually went with across the board increases for everybody uh, at that same percentage that was shared for each rank for some of our options we actually looked at addressing again compression as well it's it's something that can be explored um, and so those compression adjustments uh, would involve potentially moving people from uh, closer to the minimum to, to potentially closer to the midpoint or closer to the maximum uh, of the range so again with these cost options we'll come back to this in a moment I've got a, a couple next steps and considerations to talk about but with these cost options depending on the direction that the city would like to go in 
Um, as you can see, I think our lowest cop shop option was a little bit less than two million. The highest is, is about six million. There are some significant decisions um, that, that we need to make. We're also very comfortable costing out multiple options. We've already done it, and, and we can proceed further with multiple options. Um, so as we talk about the next steps and the considerations, again, one of the things that we're going to need um, is we're going to need some direction from the city on, on how to proceed. So those compensation philosophy um, questions, we're going to need a little bit of direction of are we interested in exploring the market average? Are we interested in exploring the top quarter? You know, do we want to look at either of those positions or, or do we say um, you know, we can rule out some of those options from the beginning? We're going to need to know, do we want to explore the same position for general government as we are for public safety or do we want to look at different market positions for the two groups? Um, probably the ideal would be if we could treat everybody the same, but many organizations do differentiate. So I, I certainly don't want to come and say that it would be unheard of. Some organizations, especially with the, in light of the, the sensitivity to public safety positions recently, some organizations do differentiate. So that's a decision, again, that you all would uh, be able to make. And again, if not make tonight, give some direction on. We don't have to, to finalize, but we, 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 would need which uh, we would need to know which direction you would like us to move in with these costs. Um, and then what we will do from there is once we hear from council that, hey, we would like to hear more about one of these options or we'd like you to proceed working with city administration, HR, um, on these cost options to figure out how we would implement those increases, we will go immediately into that costing and, and finalizing it and going forward with those recommendations so that we would be able to implement as quickly as possible. Um, review of the options, uh, again, would be done with the city. So we've provided cost options at a high level at this point, um, but once we had some direction of which, which um, direction to proceed with, we would certainly want uh, to get a little bit of, of you know, feedback and buy-in and, and understanding of exactly what we're recommending for each rank um, from city leadership as well as from HR. Um, if we would like to proceed, again, um, I'll have to defer a little bit again to city leadership here on exactly the timeline on their side for implementations to when could employees start to see that impact. But we would be ready to finalize again uh, in about two to three weeks. We'll, we'll have a defined recommendation of here is the exact dollar amount we would recommend for each individual in the public safety ranks. Uh, we can be there in about two to three weeks if we get that direction uh, and, and uh, approval to proceed uh, working with the city on those numbers. So that's the information I wanted to share. Um, I, I know it was a lot. I know there, there may be some questions, so I'm certainly happy to address those um, if, if there's anything I can, uh, can answer further. Council? <coughs> Discussion? I have a question. Hmm? You know, where we were talking about particularly option two and option three mm -hmm. on that. And did I understand right that option three, which is the 75 percentile, mm -hmm would be about a 22 percent increase it would be a proposed or it would be about 22 percent for that firefighter rank um, but what we did is we actually looked at um, the top quarter of the market is by position uh -huh. so we actually looked at the individual positioning of each rank right. and we would place each rank approximately three quarters of the way you know through the market so above three quarters of the pier uh, peers below three quarters of the peers. So it wouldn't be 22% rank for everybody. Some of your ranks are a little more competitive now. Some are a little less competitive. Um, but, but yes, it would be approximately a 22% increase for the, for the firefighter position. And again, depending on where you want to look at in the market, you will see a, a different differential that will come out. Um, but we did find, again, particularly for that rank, we did find a, 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 a difference. You know, the market is paying higher at the base pay rate, um, even at the market average. Um, for that firefighter position. With the varying uh, percentage increase, 22% mm -hmm. um, with firefighters and mm -hmm. going stepping down as, as they move up in rank, mm -hmm. doesn't that average out to about 13, 14%? increase total so it depends on exactly how you cost it out if, if you do an across the board increase um, I believe it was it, that is close to that if, if you did the numbers again that were shared previously with with council yes you can come to about a 13 14 percent increase 
depending on where you position peers versus the market and depending on how you adjust the pay of individuals, you can come to a higher or lower percentage of payroll. And so what I mean by that is if we look at a, a recommended new pay plan, um, right now, again, you, you have um, you know, your, your pay steps, but if we change the number of pay steps, if, if we go you know, from 8 to 10 to 12 to whatever number of steps or, or the other way to, to 6 to 4, you have to place employees on a new step. And so depending on how you place employees at each step, um, if you just round employees up to the next closest step, so if, if their current salary is you know, 56000 it rounds up to whatever the next closest step is, that's the cheapest option. So you could potentially come in under that 13%. That being said, that option will cause compression by rounding people up and by not accounting for um, how long they've been here or any of their other credentials or, or service time, you will cause some compression. So again, that one's the cheap option, but it will cause some compression. Um, alternatively, you can actually look and you can say, what would have happened if you know this person's been here seven years? Let's put them on step seven. Let's assume they would have grant been granted a step every single year. Um, that would be called you know, some sort of a compression adjustment based on a certain metric. You could do it based on time and rank. You could do it based on total time with the city um, or time within the department. And any of those, again, would have varying costs. So the most expensive cost option that we looked at, I believe, comes in about 23 or 24% of payroll for these ranks. Um, and that would be the cost option where we look at the top quarter of the market. And we, we look at addressing people and moving them through the ranks, or excuse me, through the range and putting them on the appropriate step based on their time. Um, depending on the market position, again, some of them would come lower, some higher. Um, but, but really, again, there's that additional flexibility of how do you put people into the pay ranges. Well, currently, we're, the issue is the firefighter level. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're losing to other stations. We're mm -hmm. not losing... Um, battalion chiefs and the chief and mm -hmm. assistant chiefs we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're losing bottom line firefighters mm -hmm. and if I'm correct our step plan to even make <clears throat> the maximum pay takes 20 years that is one of the things that we look at addressing in that third option of the compa ratio is do you want to make it a quicker progression through well, the it rank? needs to be right I mean, 20 years some of these guys are ready to retire mm -hmm. by then Mm -hmm. Well, again, absolutely. I, I, that's one of the things we would seek direction on. So if, if one of your priorities here is let's look at a market position, but let's also ensure that we get people to the max of the range or, or even up to the midpoint in a quicker period of time, that is absolutely something that we can do. Um, and again, the cost that I've modeled today actually did include um, a 10-year to max assumption. So again, some of the costs could be changed, but we already started looking at that. One of the things we did notice when looking at your plan uh, was that it does take longer to get to the max in the pay plan you're currently utilizing than many of your peer organizations. So you, you bring up an excellent point. Um, and to respond to the first thing you said as well, we did find a bigger differential with firefighters than battalion chiefs, for example. Um, and so in each of the options that we presented, each of the cost options that we looked at, uh, we would be recommending individual increases. So again, I want to be very clear with everybody. We're not recommending you move your entire scale by 10% or 20% or whatever percent. We would be taking individual, individual positions to the market. And so you may see larger increases with a firefighter rank than a battalion chief rank. That is something you might see. Uh, but we would want to make sure that we respect two things. The market, that's, that's the one. We already talked about that. Uh, but the number two is we would still make sure that we wanted to, to make sure that the plan makes sense overall, um, that you don't have people. One of the things that I have seen working with public safety um, organizations across the country is if you don't have uh, enough variation in pay between the ranks, you will run into issues where people do not want to promote. They'll say, it's not worth it for me to go from police officer to sergeant is a big one that you see a lot. It's not worth it for me to go from, um, again, in, in other organizations, potentially lieutenant to captain on, on the fire side or police side, um, you know, understanding the, the rank differences here. But um, that is something we would consider as well. In your options, um, we talk a lot about firefighters, and I know that's the forefront of what sure. we're looking at, but are we talking firefighters or are we talking public safety? So for all of the recommendations um, and, and all the costs that I shared with you, that is all of public safety. So that's fire, that's police. It also includes fire um, inspections, fire marshal. I know that was brought up as well, and the dispatch group. Okay. Um, so it is all of them, and we would be prepared to come back with recommendations for that entire group, again, in the next two to three weeks with okay. that direction to proceed. Okay. 
So that entire amount for that entire group, for example, option two would be 2.5 million. It, it could be again, but it depends when, when we say option two, um, it, it's, it's, I tried to simplify it with option one, two, three, you know, et cetera. You can make different assumptions with option two. So option two is top third of the market. So with option two, if you are willing to accept some compression, and if you're willing to say we round the next closest step, we change the step plan, give you a quicker progression overall, but we don't address compression now, we just put you on your closest step, that would be about 2.5 million. If you were going to say you keep the same step that you're on right now, so if somebody's on step four right now, they'd go to step four in the new system, you know, et cetera. That's, that's a different option to look at. It would go over three million. I believe that would be close to, to 3.25 or three and a half. Um, but again, there are varying costs depending on the way you go. Um, one of the things that we would be working on, and again, that, that the reason it'll take two to three weeks is some of these questions will come up when we start working with the city and we start saying, hey, here's how much things are going to cost. Um, is this you know financially feasible is there something else we need to look at or look you know is there some other way um, you know maybe some tweaks to this plan that would allow us to follow whatever direction you give we would hit if you said top third of the market we're gonna hit top third of the market but there are other things that can be looked at um, such as the percentage increases between steps the number of steps in the plan um, the, the amount of time it takes to, to get a step so two years currently or four years at the top of the plan um, versus annual steps. I mean, th those are all things that would impact the cost. Um, and, and so I would say, you know, my recommendation personally, it, it's, it's always hard when you come look at, you know, causing some of that compression by going with the lowest options, that 2.5. I would at least want to explore some of the other options. If you did do top third, I'd want to at least explore some of those other options. Um, but sometimes, again, to, to address the critical need, you may have to, to make a determination that, hey, we can accept some compression because we're going to fix the base and we're going to fix progression and we're going to give people a better step plan that will advance them. Um, and it would serve every single person in here. Um, it would serve them that they would make more money. Um, however, there may be some compression where somebody who's been here 10 years might make the same as someone who's been here five. Um, so those are, again, the trade-offs you would have to look well, at. Well, I think we have to cross that when it happens. We're losing right. employees right and left. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've lost 32 Mm -hmm. firefighters in the last 13 weeks I mean not, not 13 weeks but we've lost 10 in the last 13 weeks mm -hmm. I mean these guys here can attest they've come here over and over mm -hmm. wanting us to do something and I appreciate the study but it still doesn't really tell us what we need to do or where we need to be going for these guys because I was ready to give these guys more money <coughs> tonight mm -hmm. but here we are back two more weeks three more weeks where are we going to be then well again th there's going to be an implementation timeline Regardless, I mean, e even HR and, and certainly HR or maybe the city manager can address that further is even if you do vote tonight and say we want to increase the pay, it takes time. No, I it understand. takes time to go I through. Understand. We've been working on right. it for 13 weeks. Right. <laughs> well, I, again, I expect that we're at the, the very end of that. It's, it won't be another 13 weeks if we get direction to proceed again that two weeks. Um, it's not to say that that HR and finance can't be working as we work our way through the numbers. But what it is to say is, again, we have to be careful that what we don't want to do is grant an increase today that's going to cause additional compression or additional concern um, as we move forward. So some of the plans, you know, some of the options, if you say, for example, that, hey, let's spend the 2.5. Let's go to the cheapest option, but we're going to be top third. If you make that decision, we want to be sure, again, that we can live with and we do understand the compression that would come out of that. I don't and want to be the cheapest. I want to be, I want people to come Well, here. again, in top, yeah, top third, and by, by cheapest, excuse me for, for that word, um, again, top third is not the cheapest. That's well, saying mean, we're going to be aggressive, the cheapest. but it would be, be correct. That, that would be looking okay. at a little bit of compression, but it would be an aggressive market plan. It would be comparing you. Um, and again, I, I believe that increase would be in the realm of, I think, 16 to 18% again for fire um, fighters, just to say. So, so it wouldn't be the 22, but it would be close if you do top third. Okay, let, let, let's just address a couple of factors here. So regardless of what option we're going to look at, we're going to see compression. Uh, and it's going to be on a plus side. We, when, you, when we go from one position to the other, mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. Every option is going to look at, you're going to see it. You know, for the layman's term, and when we're talking about, because we're talking about steps, not everybody understands what we're talking about steps and mm -hmm. compression. Real briefly, Talk about when we're talking about steps and then compression, then I have a follow-up question. For okay, that, absolutely. So I'll use your current plans to sort of address the steps to, to talk about them as, as they function now. 
Um, but a step plan, essentially the, the way that that works is you come in at the base step or the entry level pay at a position. So again, for the firefighter rank, it's uh, to use that as an example, it's, it's 53,800 or 600 or somewhere in that range. So you come in, sorry, so, so you'd come in at that base pay and then under the current plan, again, every two years you would receive a step increase which means that you would automatically, when you get that increase, go to the set amount of pay that is you know, that next step up the plan. Uh, many of your peers would grant step increases every one year. Um, and again, some organizations would grant that first step after six months. These are the things that again could be considered and tweaked. But a step plan essentially means that you have a defined progression, that you can look at that step plan today and you know what you'll make four years from now. Uh, assuming performance to get the steps. So you can look at where the steps will go, you'll look at where your salary will move through that plan. So compression, um, there, there could be two different types of compressions that are the main type of compression, but one type of compression is if you have an employee who's been at the city for 10 years and they've got 10 years of experience, they've got 10 years of, of you know, they've worked here for that long, they've given and dedicated their time, if they are making the same amount as somebody who's been here for two years, we would call that compression absent some performance concerns or, or another outside factor. So if people have been here again for different amounts of times or if they have different levels of performance, if there should be variation in their pay and there is not, that's what we would refer to as compression. Okay. Now, this other question I have. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you mentioned about pay ranges between promotions, and you can use the example sergeant to to an off, uh, to, to officer. Mm -hmm. Now we have a similar thing, I think that was addressed. And I, I, I apologize because I can't recall what that rank was, and there was a concern about that. Mm -hmm. uh, in your studies that you looked at in comparison to cities like this, was that common? I mean basically is what, what does that pay range differentiation have to be in order to basically entice promotion? I don't know that there's one set amount mm -hmm. um, because again there's different things that go into that even beyond the pay um, in, in a lot of organizations part of the concern is if you're an officer and you have significant tenure as an officer you may get the best assignments you may get the best shifts you go up to be a brand new sergeant you might have to work night shift that's one of the, the common concerns that we hear is if I'm a brand new sergeant, I lose my seniority that I have as a tenured officer. So each individual person can make that decision for themselves. Uh, some people might say, you know what, I don't have kids yet, I don't have a family, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna work nights, I'm gonna move up the ranks and I'm not doing it to be a sergeant, I'm doing it because I might get another promotion, I'm gonna continue to move. Some people may have that philosophy. Um, others might just decide, no, if I can make enough as an officer, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a career officer. That's what I want to do. I don't want the, the supervisory responsibility, et cetera. So I can't necessarily say there's a certain set percentage, um, but what I can say is that second type of compression that I didn't just a, a address a moment ago, that second type of compression would be rank compression. So if you have a police officer making more than a sergeant, you can look at that as compression. The sergeant would typically be asked um, to have more responsibility, more duties. They've got the supervision. Uh, they're, they're running a shift, whereas the officer does not have that responsibility. So if an officer's making more than a sergeant, if a sergeant's making more than a lieutenant, et cetera, that's another type of compression. So one of the things that you want to be sure is that when you do have that inversion, sometimes it might make sense. If you have an officer, a career officer, who's, who's again been here 10, 20, 30 years, and they just say, I'm just going to stay at this rank and I'm at the max, it might be okay to have a brand new sergeant make less than that person who spent their entire career here. Um, but you want to have a pay plan, again, that makes sense so that when you promote you know, from officer to sergeant, you get a substantial increase, a substantial in your own opinion that, hey, I'm, I'm willing to take on this additional responsibility for this increase. And so does that mean a 5%, a 10%? I don't know. It's different to each person. But what we would do is, again, look at the policies you have in place now, see how they're working, see what your peers are doing, and, and make the decision of, do we need to recommend a change here, or do we think this policy is working? Um, so it would be an individualized um, sort of each yeah. each you know, agency in each rank can be looked at uh, individually. Okay. So let me ask, <clears throat> ask this question, make a statement and then ask this question. I appreciate Council Member Swanner's position. However, I do believe this is the correct way to go for the city of Odessa and for the taxpayers that are going to foot this bill, whatever the bill is. Mm -hmm. So I guess if my question, Mr. Morrow, is uh, 
at a at a top, just as an example, a top one third, sixty six percent, you know, two point seven five million. Where does that put the city? Where do we find the money to do something like that? Well, um, I'll ask Cindy to correct me, but right now you would have to look for those dollars uh, through any excess in sales tax or through our fund balance. Okay, and our projected sales tax for the next year is $48 million. We've already committed some of that to the general budget because of the of shortfall of the Avalon, correct? A good part of that would be general operations, yes, sir. So I just, you know, I, that's, that's, I, I want to give everybody as much as we can give them. I don't disagree with that. All we keep, what we keep hearing from the firefighters is what, you, what they do here because of the number of runs that, that we do here versus somewhere else. We keep hearing over and over about the gentleman that went to Lufkin or wherever he made, he made six runs in a year and he makes six runs in a day here. I understand that. So how is that? That's got to be factored in somehow because they keep saying we're training everybody else for the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not a good situation either. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, so you're right. I mean, that is one of the things that, that you can look at when making comparisons. The other things you can look at is, again, the, the, you, know, you can look at the composition of a city. So what, is the, what are the square miles? You know, how much area does somebody have to cover? Um, you can also look at things like entry requirements um, for a city. So as an example, we did look at um, the city of Plano was one that we were directed or, or requested rather to look at from mm -hmm. fire. We, we did look at that. We have a lot of familiarity um, with that area. We've worked in the area and made comparisons there before. Um, and so again, there are some things that might make that accurate, but one of the things that has to be considered is they actually have very high entry requirements there. They, they hire paramedic firefighters um, as their baseline position. And so that's another thing that has to be considered is if you're looking at their pay for someone with a paramedic certification, we need to factor in paramedic certification pay for somebody here um, to make sure, again, we're looking at that whole picture. Um, you can look at things like that, but again, I, I think with the representative sample we have, I do think we have those peers at the high end. I, I do think you'll have peers that are comparable. We did have a number of matching peers um, on the list we came up with um, for, from the list that FIRE provided as well. And so if you look at a top third or a top quarter, you are automatically, I mean, that's what the, the methodology would do is you would be looking at those fire agencies that pay more, the, the more competitive agencies, which again are typically going to be those that are going to need to recruit that higher caliber of employee. And, and um, oftentimes it'd be the, the employees with the additional workload as well. Not, not one to one, um, but often that would be captured there as well. Okay. Um, so I think if you look at the market average, you are going to be comparing to, to many organizations that are slower, many that are um, you know, comparable. I don't want to say more um, you know, busier. I don't know that, but comparable agencies. If you look at a top third or top quarter or even a 60th percentile, again, it doesn't have to be the two we shared. But if you look at a more aggressive market position, you should capture that. Okay. okay good. So back to my, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Back, back to my question, mm -hmm. affordability. Can you? I mean, I mean, we're all, let, let, let's go to the options. Can we go back on the sure. screen on the options? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the same question. The 60, 66 percentile is $2.2 million a year to $2.75 million. So, you know, we sure can't get that out of property tax. We don't get enough now to fund fire and police and first responders anyway. So now we've already dedicated what I believe my number's correct, $2 million out of the this year's upcoming sales tax to cover the general budget. So that leaves forty six million. So if we so where do you think we, we are, Cindy, on that? Or the risk. I, I'm worried about the risk. Because this is not a it's not, you know, Councilman Swanner wants to use the ten million dollar ARPA funds, which is great, that's a one time deal. It doesn't go on and on and on and if we do this, then we all know that if you give salaries, if, at least if in my business over the years, once you give it, you can't take it away. It doesn't go anywhere. So you've got to be sure that you can live with the number that you that you purpose. But and so my whole deal is, I still want to be the, I still want us to have the best paid people out there. I think we cover a lot of territory, and I know that. So we're but, also getting an increase of over two million dollars in property tax as well. That's already been factored in the budget. Well, can you go ahead and answer the questions so we can go ahead and move on? Because we're not going to solve the issue tonight. No. Yeah. So yeah. can you go ahead and, and So and, and our, talk about our proposed budget for 22-23 for sales tax is $45 million. Okay. What we received in for 21-22 was $48 million five rounded up. 
Okay, so that's about three and a half million to the good. Um, we so our forty five million um, is what we're projecting for this next year. If we get the same amount we got last year, that's where you stand. If something changes with sales tax, which I you don't know, have that crystal ball, but that's where you are. Um, our excess revenue over expenditures for general fund budgeted for 22-23 is only $753,000. So we've already used all the property taxes and we've used all the sales tax as projected at $45 million. So, yeah. so okay. we're running a risk. I mean, and the, the only thing that I will add that that's not been put in the presentation is to remember that benefits is not any part of this conversation to, right. in their numbers. So you have to consider what benefits cost you as well. And those percentages are not small percentages. They're uh, pretty fire, fire alone is what, 20, our, our share is 20, our share is 16%. Yeah, 16% burden on, on our share. Our, our contribution to Fireman's Retirement Fund is at 28% in the new year. That's, that's all city's portion? No, that, that's city's portion to the Fireman's Fund, and TMRS for all others is 14%. Okay, I thought it was 16 and 20. Okay. Okay. 16 is what the employee play, or what the firefighters Yes, the firefighters do put in a and higher percentage. They put in a higher percentage to their plan okay. than other employees put to TMRS, yes. Right. And, these numbers and then additional 8% cover your Social Security, Medicare, and workers' comp. Cindy, do these numbers take into consideration once the study is done completely that we've got to make adjustments for everybody else, if, if that's what the study that, says? Well, th I, that depends on what philosophy, I mean, what option y'all choose. I mean, I'm saying there could be an option that says, you know, we're not, we're going to look at what they present and say, you know, there's other employees who are. I mean, absolutely. And so there's, there's more money. That's, but that money's not included in that, in that figure. It's not in, so what he, the numbers he is giving y'all tonight is just public safety. That's, that's what I'm saying. And it's just base pay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. And so, I, I would like to clarify, I did uh, say ARPA funds of the $10 million. We actually have $14 million that are coming back, and that would buy us three years to shave or figure out. I mean, we can spend $10 million on a general, out of general funds on a road project, but we can't give these guys more money? That makes no sense For to all me. employees. I mean, and I get it. You know, um, I'm right there with y'all. I want everybody, I want them to get it. But guys, we voted on a system, and there is a process in every business. There is a process. And I think, I know it's been said we've lost 30, 38, and I hate it. I wish we had them all. We figured out last week that there was about eight of those who actually left for pay. You know, for whatever reason they left, I wish we had them. But there is a process, and, and it's a process for a reason. We can't just, I mean, I'm, I'm a citizen as well, soon to be y'all citizen. And I think it's imperative that we do things in a process with a process we don't just throw it out there we don't just say we're voting tonight you know i was approached last week vote this way for this amount but that's not how we do it you know we have to know where the finances are coming from we have to know how it's going to affect me as a taxpayer and i do guys somebody said on oap did you look them in the face and tell them you want to do more i'm looking you in the face and telling you i get it I want you to have more. I want you to have what you deserve. So the answer to that question is yes, I'm looking them in the face, and yes, I'm looking them in the eye, and I do get it, and I do want it. But there has to be a process, and we, seven people, voted on that process, and I think we need to come up with one of these options and follow that process. Through. That's a good segue. So recommendation options here, cost options calculated in multiple criteria. So we have option one, two, three, and four. As council uh, reviewed that, it's in front of your screen. We need to find a consensus in which we want to go for uh, direction. I'd like to go with option two and three and get the numbers for both of those options. Okay. We have consensus for option two and three. Council? I would agree. Okay. I agree. I agree too. Okay. I do have one question. You gave a very impressive presentation. So you obviously know what you're doing. You talked about compression within the department. What kind of compression can we expect within the city? 
there, there is going to be some compression. Mm -hmm. It'll push out mm -hmm. uh, more than just our first responders. Mm -hmm. What can we expect? So when you say what kind of compression can you expect, are you saying after the solution is implemented, after we make recommendations, or? When or we make these changes for mm -hmm. our first responders, mm -hmm. what are we going to get from our other employees? Mm -hmm. So if you're referring to compression sort of between where the public safety positions are now versus where they move, versus what's happening with general government, um, again, we're coming back with recommendations on general government as well within the next few months. So we will be able to address that fully. That, that concern will be addressed fully in that we will be able to make the similar type of recommendations for general government. Um, and one of my questions again will be, are, are we going to do the same implementation methodology for general government? Are we going to look at 6675 or mm -hmm. is it going to be something different? Um, because again, if you're looking at a higher market position for one than other, you could call that you know, sort of a, a type of compression where you're seeing one move up and the other not as far. So it really depends on the option. Um, again, with the implementation, it's going to depend on the option you select as well because with general government, it'll be a little bit different. Um, than the public safety step plans we have, but the general principle is the same. You can select an aggressive market position and then you can accept more compression to lower the cost. And you could do a, a less expensive option for general government that would be an aggressive market position, but it would have more compression. Or you could move forward just like when I gave you the range here for public safety and I said, well, it could be as cheap as you know 2.753 or as expensive as 6 million you could do the same exact compression adjustments for general government. And so that's one of the things that we will come forward with is multiple options on that as well to address compression and ensure that you all know the exact price that will come out of it. If we say, here's the Cadillac option where we don't have compression and here's the option where we believe we've addressed it to the best of our ability and here's the option where again we, we recognize the, the fiscal constraints, we recognize the responsibility with citizens' money and here's an option that, again, we think is the best that can be done given available resources. Um, so I, I hate to sort of say it depends, but I, I really can't honestly give any other answer besides it will depend on the direction that we go. There will be some. There will be some. And when I say the Cadillac option, I should probably be careful to say we'll address it as best we can. I mean, the Cadillac option, I think, will be very, very good. But no, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sit here and say there will be zero compression between any employee. Uh, ultimately, any plan that you do is going to be have to have to be based on a certain set of rules, and some rules might benefit some employees. Some rules might benefit another. And, and again, as an example, I talked before about using time in department versus time in position, um, and so some employees might benefit more if you do time in position because they've been in their same position for a long time. That might hurt somebody who's just promoted. Um, somebody may have been in a position 10, 15 years and they promoted last week, and if we do a time in position implementation, they're not going to be happy with that. Um, but likewise, you could look at time and department and you could say, hey, somebody else just promoted into the department. They're a high performer. There's somebody we want to recognize, but if we do time and department, that, per that performer might suffer. So again, it's going to depend on the approach that you take. Um, th there will be some compression. You know, nothing is perfect. Um, but I do think we can come back with some options. Again, the, the excellent option that I think everybody would be very, very thrilled with. Um, and then the options that we say, hey, let's, let's do the best that we can. Again, recognizing the statements that were made by everybody up here. Uh, we want to do the best that we can. We want to give employees as much as we can uh, while being responsible with the funds. Absolutely. So in, in the numbers, when you come back with the numbers, mm -hmm. because it's a real number, mm -hmm. I'd like to see numbers like you presented today without the mm -hmm. burden on it, but we've got to see the burden as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just a base number. Okay, sure. There's 28% on top of whatever Absolutely. for the firefighters. So it's a lot of money. Absolutely. So it's got to be a total package. Okay. You want to real wrong. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, we know, we have to know what the what the impact is. Yes. Okay. So uh, consensus is for option two and three. Yes. Okay. And, and then my other question again, just to make sure again that we know exactly where we're going. So two and three, we are looking at uh, option two and three, that sixty uh, six and seventy fifth, with the um, supplemental pays, the benefits. Are, are we going to be taking an average market position there? Do we want to look at uh, essentially having the benefits or, or the supplemental pays that are above and beyond as well? Or what is the what I is would the recommend there? leaving those. I'd, I'd hate to see anything decline on like their add-on pays. 
And, and to be clear, uh, we do believe, and, and again, we'll have more definitive numbers. We're continuing to collect and finalize that on the supplements. But uh, the benefits currently, we believe, are above market. And so we okay. do believe if you're at the 66th or 75th on base, um, there are significant earning potentials on those yeah. supplemental pays. And so that would put you um, probably in the total compensation package. If you pick 75th percentile, you're going to be above 75th in the total compensation package. So sure. just, and just same thing with 66. Six, yeah, same I mean, thing with 66. Six, six. If you pick 66, six, six, you're yes. correct. Um, yeah, I, I, correct. I mean, that's, that's my feeling. I, I don't yeah. want to see anything. Do you want to need to shrink yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Compressed, yeah. Any Stop. further uh, discussion? I do have someone that wants to speak on this item, item four, public safety compensation. Ariel? Just state, just state your name for the record, please, and only uh, your name. Good afternoon, council. My name is Ariel. Um, I'll try, I'll oh, definitely will be brief. Just a few uh, food for thoughts. I have with me here a book it is, in fact, the same book that this country was founded on. And inside of this book are basic <coughs> principles, not only for how we are to pay employees, but the methodology for that instead. I spoke, and I think um, Mayor Hoven was there at the town hall meeting that Congressman Pfluger held, mm -hmm. that I said a lot of the reason why we are having such issue coming to resolution on subjects such as this is because we have stepped away from principle. Amen. I feel the main key factor to resolving this issue is how do we put a dollar amount on a human life? What is it worth? Now, according to the EPA, they don't even value human life based on the life itself, but based on the contribution that the life makes towards reducing risks that it, in, it, it encounters in its environment, which is another thing we have to factor into our environment. Our market is not isolated. It's not just limited to Odessa, Texas. The way that our country, uh, progresses in terms of its interaction with other countries, things we're facing in terms of war, the pandemic. These things affect the living experiences of our public safety uh, individuals. Things like the pandemic, how that affected crime rate. Did it rise or did it fall? Um, I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with the current statistics for Odessa, but we are ninth from the bottom in terms of safety in the US alone. That affects you know, people's willingness to come into work. So when we, when we talk about putting in things, okay, how do we figure out how much we should be paying or how little we should be paying or how often we should be paying, we have to return to principle. And I feel that will eliminate a lot of the guesswork and what should we do. Thank you, Thank you Ariel. Thank you. So, um, do we need a vote on this, or do we the consensus is good enough to move forward? Question? Do we need a vote? Do we need a, con oh, is the consensus good enough for option two and three, and we'll just move yes. forward? A consensus yes. is fine. All right, so we're good. We're good on that discussion. Moving on to public hearing, item five. Open a public hearing to consider approval of request by Jack M. Rosada, LTD owner, LCA agent, rezone office. Council. I'll try to be brief. I only anticipate about 20, 30 minutes per request. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> careful, right. careful, Tom will move from <laughs> adjournment. Tom will be yeah. We can move to item 13 real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
In this first case, the city mailed out eight notices. We did not have a notice returned, and we did not receive a positive or a negative protest or response. Uh, the property involved in the re uh, rezoning request is uh, located at the intersection of Tracer Monas Boulevard and San Michel Drive. This site is currently uh, zoned office. It is vacant. Land use in the area does consist of uh, retail and commercial development and vacant land north of this site and south and east of the site is vacant land. The applicant and property owner is Jack Musa. He is represented by LCA. And the purpose of the rezone request from Office 2 Retail would facilitate retail development on this property. Uh, using the city's identified priorities that's contained in the comprehensive plan that would evaluate a zoning request like this, the staff would offer the following comments. Uh, the proposed rezoning to retail is not contrary to established land uses in this area, uh, nor is it contrary to the uh, land use plan of the city's master plan. Uh, the proposed rezoning would not have a negative impact on this site or on adjacent properties. And the retail development is not out of line uh, with the existing retail development in this area. The proposed rezoning will be in line with the existing light like, commercial zoning that's across Trace Hermanas, and it would uh, uh, correspond to the retail development and zoning that's just adjacent to this property along uh, uh, Trace Hermanas. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to approve this request to retail zoning, and planning staff does concur with the recommendation for approval, and be happy to answer any questions. Council questions, discussion? Randy, what kind of, the only question I've got is what kind of pressure is that going to put on trash from on us? Uh, it really shouldn't add any pressure so to it, any retail. traffic increase, because Trace Hermanus was designed to handle this yeah. type of development and use. There. At the county Thank road, anyway. Trash Hermanus? I don't think so. I think paid for it. <laughs> they paid for it. We're, yeah, we're, we're maintaining it. Yeah. Uh, Captain, for the discussion. Master. <laughs> okay, seeing that this is a public hearing, Anybody wishing to come forward and speak on item five to consider approval request by Jack uh, Mosa for uh, owner LCA agent for rezone office to, and to retail can do so by coming forward. You sure you don't want to come up here and speak? Only if you have questions. Okay, so uh, seeing that Mr. Langer does not wish to come forward and speak on behalf of this item, I'm opening this up for a public uh, hearing to be able to do so. My wife got up and scared me there for a second. <laughs> and so uh, you can do so by coming forward now, stating your name for the record. Seeing that nobody rushed over to the podium, I will close the uh, public hearing and consider a motion for approval by the council. So moved. moved. I have a motion by Council Member Thompson, second by Cam Council Member Willis. All in favor indicating by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. We're going to uh, move on to item six open hearing, consider approval request for ACE completion. Uh, LLC, owner LCA agent, regional zoning from industrial, uh, from light industrial zoning, approximately 31.51 acres. Mr. Brindley. Yes, sir. Uh, the city mailed out eight notices also for this case. We had one notice returned, and we did not receive a positive or a negative response related to the request. Uh, the property involved in the request is located northeast of the intersection of Pronto and Trunk Streets. The site is currently designated future development. It is occupied by uh, industrial development and vacant land. Uh, land use in this area consists of industrial development and vacant land. Uh, the applicant in this case is Ace Completions LLC. They do own this property, and they too are represented by LCA. Uh, the purpose of the zone request of light industrial uh, would facilitate additional light industrial development on the property, and it is also a requirement to uh, replant this property for ownership purposes. Um, using the city's identified priorities um, that's contained in the comprehensive plan, staff would offer the following comments. Uh, the proposed zone request is not contrary to established land uses in the area, and uh, it is, uh, would not be uh, contradictory to the city's uh, master plan of land uses. The proposed zoning would not have a negative impact on this site or on surrounding properties. The proposed light industrial development is not out of line with uh, the existing development in the area. The proposed zoning would be uh, encircled by existing industrial development and it will facilitate a compatible development to existing land uses in this area. And the Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to approve this request, and staff does uh, 
uh, will it recommend approval of the request to light industrial. Is this the property that had that uh, drill site on it and it was moved? Uh, no, sir. Okay. No, sir. This is, uh, it was at one time a part of an industrial district and it was annexed into the city. And uh, when it was annexed in, it came in as just future development okay. and to replat and also uh, add some more structures and expand their buildings or expand their business, they do need to zone the property. Council, questions, discussion? <coughs> Since this is a public hearing, I will open the uh, public in request of anyone wishing to address this uh, item six as presented can do so by coming forward, stating your name for the record and only your name. You can do so by coming forward now to the podium. It's a long 30 seconds. Seeing that no one's uh, coming forward to the podium to do so, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, and Entertain a motion for approval item six as presented by Mr. Brennan. So moved. A uh, motion by Council Member Mata, second by Council Member White. All in favor indicated by saying aye. Aye. All opposed indicated by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. We're going to move on to ordinance item seven. <coughs> Consider approval of voluntary annexation request by BNO Homes, owner of approximately 280.68 acre tract, sections 27, 28, block 42, Township 1. Texas Pacific Railroad Survey, Ector County, uh, Texas, on the southeast intersection of Northeast Loop 338 and U.S. Highway 35. This is a second and final approval. Mr. Brindley. Well, you just did my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother. I do want to make sure that uh, we, we, we're putting that on there for the record. <laughs> yes, and sir. And since I'm a surveyor, I know exactly what all that means. Yes, so. sir. No, we, uh, this is the second uh, reading and uh, consideration of the ordinance it does authorize the uh, annexation of approximately 280 uh, acres of land into the city of Odessa this will develop be developed into uh, oh, approximately uh, 1079 single-family residential lots also have a surface drainage area of approximately 61 acres and one drill site that is approximately four acres and uh, this will uh, become uh, effective approximately 30 days after publication of this ordinance and it would be uh, uh, roughly uh, the 15th of next month roughly in that time frame and be happy to answer any questions council questions discussion there's one question randy are these homes on the round loop piece of this property are those homes actually going to be right up against 338 uh that hadn't been determined yet councilman we're still going through okay. a uh, uh Speak now for her will repeat. Yes, sir. Statement. We're still. You know, well, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm concerned that if they get too close to that loop, that somebody's going to have a car in their backyard. Yeah. That yes, loop, sir. That loop moves fast, as do all the trucks. So yes, well, the, I'm the, concerned about that. So I don't, I'd like to see that addressed. Yes, sir. City staff is concerned also, and we're yeah. working with Beaton Bow to get this work. There's got to be some kind of a buffer there, I think. So I'm not asking them to lose a lot of homes, but at the same time, it's got to be safe. Yes, sir. In my opinion. Would it be similar to the loop right now on East Loop and the uh, Well, because this, this is more of a curb. And the, yeah, and so, yeah. so you factor the, uh, the, uh, the you know, engineer will talk to you about that. Well, pitch on, and stuff like that. Yeah, on the East Loop by the Country Club of States, I mean, there's a, there's a buffer there. 20, <coughs> foot speed limit is. Range buffer speed there. limit on the loop is. No light out. Uh, 65. 65, yes. Suggested. Yes. Suggested. Suggested. <laughs> speed limit 65. That doesn't always work. Yeah, that's, uh, hey, stop signs or suggestions. Bead and bow's here, too, if you have any. <sighs> yeah, there's a light. <laughs> Council, any other questions or discussion? <laughs> Seeing this is a public hearing to consider approval request. Uh, hold on. Uh, no, so this is consideration no, of the ordinance. ordinance. Go, go down, go down. Ordinance. Consider approval of voluntary annexation request by being <laughs> homes. This is a public uh, it is a public hearing. No. Right? no? Okay. Ordinance. Ordinance. I'm sorry. Good. So, hmm. uh, yeah. So, any final discussion? Any comments? So moved. Thank you. I have a <laughs> motion by <laughs> Council Member Swanner, second by Council Member White. All in favor indicated by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. All opposed indicated by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you for being patient through this whole process. Thank you. And move on to the next one. We're going to move on to item eight. Consider amending section 12-2-8 temporary speed limits. First approval. Ow! Good Here is the happy evening, portion Mayor of Council. the whole night right there. There you go. Um, this agenda item is dealing with the section of the ordinance that deals with temporary speed limits. 
i.e. construction speed zones. I need to remove two of them. The first one is for University Boulevard between Andrews uh, Highway and Grand Avenue. That project's complete. I also need to remove a section of John Ben Shepherd Parkway near Loop 338. TxDOT was built in a signal. That project's done. That can be removed. I need to add a section of Fodry between 191 and Yukon. Um, proposed to reduce the speed limit from 45 to 30 during that roadway construction. Um, and it will be uh, enforceable when the contractor has the appropriate signs out on the roadway. That's what this item's for. Council, uh, discussion? <clears throat> Any questions? I have a motion? Move approval. I have a motion by Council Member Tom to second Roll by Council Member Mata. All in favor, indicated by saying not. Aye. Aye. All opposed, Aye. indicated by saying nay. Motion passes unanimous. We move on to resolution item nine consider approval of lease agreement with the Black Cultural Council of Odessa. Ms. Munson. Yes, Council Mayor, this agenda item is to approve a lease agreement with the Black Cultural Council of Odessa for uh, city owned property, the Gertrude Bruce Historical Cultural Center at 1020 East Murphy Street. Uh, under the terms of this lease, the leasee shall provide on-site supervision, post signs necessary for safety, notice of all rules and regulations, provide necessary enforcement and security, as well as other special conditions in the lease agreement. They shall be solely responsible for all maintenance, repair, and operation expense arising out of their use of the building and shall maintain all required insurances noticed in the lease agreement in full force and effect at all times during the term of the lease agreement and during any extensions. The terms and conditions expressed in the lease agreement are for public purpose and for the mutual benefit of both parties and constitute adequate consideration without any exchange of monetary consideration. This lease will be executed um, upon y'all's approval and when all required information and insurances are in place. Um, I will answer any questions you might have. Council discussion, any questions? No. Entertain a motion. So I have a motion by <laughs> Council Member Willis, second by Council Member White. All in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes the answer. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to item 10, consider denying May 13, 2022, filling of on course intent to increase rates. What's your matter? Mayor, Council, good evening. Um, the approval of this item would allow the city to deny the request of Encore that was made on May 13, 2022, to increase rates. Encore has filed an application with all cities that it serves <clears throat> in its jurisdiction in order to seek, um, to seek rather, to increases that would generate $251 million uh, over their current amount today. Residential customers would see an approximate increase of about 11.2 if this goes through. However, uh, we are recommending that you deny this request in order to allow the city and its, uh, who is a member of the Encore Steering Committees to go back to Encore and negotiate a lower rate for our residents. Council discussion? Have a motion. So moved. Have a motion by Council Member White. A uh, motion by Council Member Thompson to uh, consider to deny the uh, May 13, 2020 final intent to increase rates. All in favor indicated by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed indicated by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously on item 10. We move on to uh, miscellaneous appointment of boards. Um, for the Public Art Committee. I'm sorry, you just threw me off, <laughs> Council Willis and White. <laughs> uh, for the Public Art Committee, uh, there's a reappointment for Cruz Castillo and Deanne Casper and appoint a three-year term for Mara Willis and Ta Tim O'Reilly. Council discussion? I have a motion. So moved. I have a motion second. by Council Member White, uh, second by Com Senator Council Member Thompson. All in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All those opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion I'd like to abstain, Mayor. From the vote. Okay, uh, we have a four in the firm and one abstention. Move on to item 13. Uh, it's authorized by Texas Government Code in section 551.074, uh, personnel matters. I, I have a question on this. Uh, it says council, I, I, I did not, I was not informed about this. Um, so right now I, I'm, I'm my protesting, but going into the, uh, into, uh, executive session 
And my protest is based on one simple thing. Uh, basically, we're talking about personal matters, and City Council may adjourn to executive session to consider personal matters to deliberate employment evaluation duties, discipline, complaint, dismissal of public officers employees. This is a broad range. We're, we're talking about one, two, three, four individuals. So I guess my question is, the request, Five. Five Judge, Judge Rodriguez is not is Five. not here. He is uh, currently, I'm not in sure, I just know he's classes. not gonna be in attendance, he's correct? Yes. Yeah. So the thing is, is that we'll have to do this process again. Second of all, these are a broad range uh, uh, topics that will be discussed in uh, executive session, which I am very always hesitant to go into executive session, I know it specifically if it has to. Um, and so the thing is, is that I'm uncomfortable going into executive session, but since it has been placed on the agenda and it's been done properly, I have the, uh, the I have to be authorized to be able to read it and to put it up to the vote. Uh, so I'm just cautioning council that by going into the executive session, only individuals there that uh, are on this list will be there among council, and the strict uh, there'll be a strict line to be able to just discuss these items on there. Council, do you want have any discussion or any comments on this? I, I have a comment. So when it says council, I was unaware of this as well. Um, usually it has our names out beside every time me and Councilman Mata uh, put something on it. It always calls us out. So I was just. It says council, and I was not aware of this until yesterday as well. Council, I, uh, in my Friday memo, I indicated that the request had come from council members uh, Willis and White. I'm not sure why it wasn't listed as Willis and White under that item. And can I say? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. And, and I mean, we do annual evaluations, and this wording is just. And Natasha, correct me if I'm wrong. That wording is just the part of the government code that allows us to go into executive session to discuss that. We do annual reviews on these folks yeah. every, usually try to do them in September. And uh, especially if there's a salary adjustment pending for the 1st of October. That wasn't the case for this time around. You know, we don't have an October 1st salary increase. So it got pushed back. Uh, I, I honestly had thought it was going to be on the agenda a couple of weeks ago, and, and it wasn't. And I asked Michael why it hadn't been. And uh, and so that's why we put this forward, just to get it taken care of. You know, we are the council that has supervised for the last year, and so we're the responsible council for doing their annual review. I, let me answer that for the reason is that... Um, I was instructed that it's tradition to go ahead and put it on the September and I had it removed. For the reason is that I felt that we weren't at the point to be able to consider these personal matters because I had strictly in the beginning, in the middle of the year when we wind up doing a second round of, uh, of, uh, of increases, I said I wanted to be able to hold off till October. Since we wind up having the compensation study, uh, I definitely wanted to be able to hold off until we had all the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I guess all the ducks in a row of what we were basically talking about. Because the thing is, is that it's been my experience several times throughout the years and through all, all my terms that we've gone into discussion about the, uh, the appointees, compensation always becomes a situation. It is correct that, you know, uh, it was never discussed whether we were going to consider in December 1 uh, for the reason is that we've never gone this far, but it was my uh, understanding that this is what we we're going into. And I did not want to discuss in, uh, appointee uh, uh, in, uh, compensation at this time. Not, and the thing is, is that now it's come back uh, on there and it's been properly done and, and, and everything has been included except for the, the, the compensation. This is why I'm also basically saying caution, be very careful about what is discussed and, and the matters discussed and that it only could be held to uh, deliberation of employee evaluation duties and discipline complaint and dismissal of the public officer and employees. Uh, so, is there any other further discussion on this? Okay. Seeing I'm that we're going to executive session. I understand. Let me let me read the uh, the uh, the, uh, okay. the code for the Here reason we're... is that prior counsel has jumped the gun and wind up getting sued for that. So, as authorized by the Texas Government Code, Section 551.074, Personal Matters, the City of Council may adjourn into executive session 
to consider personal matters, deliberate the employment, evaluation, duties, and discipline, and complaint or dismissal of a public officer employee by Texas Government Code 551.074. Do I have a motion? I make that motion. I have a motion by Council Member Spall. So I have a second. Second. Second by Council Member White. All in favor, indicated by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, indicated by saying nay. Nay. We are in executive session. Vote by six to one. And we will adjourn to executive session, and we will return. I'm not sitting though. I'm going to stand for you. I appreciate that. Quicker getaway. <clears throat> Seeing that there's no action taken in executive session, do I have a motion to recon uh, reconvene the uh, back into general session? So moved. I have a, second. Have a motion by Council, Council Member Swan, a second by Council Member Malta. All in favor of reconvening back in general session, uh, indicate by uh, indication by aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. I move to adjourn. Seeing that on item 13, there is no more uh, business before this, uh, this council, I have a motion by Council Member uh, Sprawls. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Council Member Thompson. All in favor indicated by saying aye. Aye. All opposed indicated by saying nay. Motion passed unanimously. We are adjourned. Be careful going home.